One out of five women has either been assaulted or they have been attempted to be assaulted. One out of five, 20% of all women across America have been assaulted at one time or another. Now something's wrong. Something's wrong with that picture. Listen to this one. Across the world, there are one billion women who have been raped or beaten in their lifetime. We've only got eight billion people. A billion women have been assaulted, raped, or beaten in their lifetime. You tell me the morals haven't gone downhill? Come on, somebody. Uh, today's message, uh, I did this sermon. It's been about eight years ago. Uh, but there's been so much happen uh, in rapid succession the last eight years that I wanted to do this message again. It's called A World in Crises. And if you are uh, on the telephone or on the internet or radio, whatever it might be, you can see that our world, we're in trouble. Is everybody with me today? Uh, but I want to make this point straight before we go any further. It seems or appears that things have got so far out of hand that not even God can save us. But in uh, Psalms 103, now, CJ, this just hit me a couple of months ago, so I'm going to read this scripture. In Psalms 103, 19, if you have your Bibles, I, I want you to listen to this, what the Bible says. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. You hear what I just said? God's kingdom. So what I'm trying to say today, that no matter how it appears to you, things are completely out of control. God has everything in control. Everything that is happening now has been prophesied for the last 6,000 years. And as Seventh-day Adventists, we've been waiting for this day, for this time, for this season, that we knew it was coming, and yet it's still a shock. We knew that the human values and morals would drop significantly before Jesus came, but not on this scale, not on this level. We knew through prophecy and Ellen G. Ellen G. Weiss' writings that the morals would drop to an all-time low. There would be evilness and darkness, but not to this level. Our world is in trouble. And the only way out today for those that are viewing this program, the only way out of this world alive is through the lovely Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say amen. Let's go to our scriptures. If you have your Bibles and our friends on the other side of that camera, let's go to uh, Mark 13, verse 8. We're talking again about a world that has gone mad. We talked about that a couple years ago as well. And here's what the Bible says. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in divers places, that means everywhere. And there shall be famines and troubles, and get this, and these are just the beginning of sorrows. Listen to this in Luke 21.10. Here's what the Bible says. Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. You know, in our world today, it's a little frightening. Uh, many, many years ago, we signed what we, I call contracts with other nations. And in this contract, we'll make it very simple today, Here's what we said as all these nations came together. If one of our nations or country gets in trouble, we're going to be there for them. Now we come to the point, well, they're on their own. <laughs> or we've got enough going on in our country. Things have changed. Violence has escalated. Crimes, not just in America, but across the world, are at an all-time higher. Evilness in the world today and darkness in our world today is never been this dark. Churches across the nations, the lights are going out. Christians are becoming dim instead of brighter. We're seeing that even in our churches today, that they're dying all across, not just America, but the world. Is anybody with me? We are at an all-time low in our morals. And testimonies for the church. 
Here's what my favorite writer said, volume 6, page 408. The restraining spirit of God is even now being withdrawn from the world. Hurricanes, storms, fires, floods, disasters at sea and land follow each other in quick succession. Even then, 150 years ago, my, fi my favorite writer said, I'm starting to see events that are taking place that are unholy. They're unrighteous. Even nature itself is rebelling at the sins of mankind and hurricanes and tornadoes and storms and pestilences are growing at a great and fast rate, destroying not only our morals, but our trees and our flowers and our waters are being polluted because men are evil, they're greedy, they're unrighteous, they're unholy, and these are all signs just before Jesus comes. Is everybody with me today? This is what we're looking at. Listen to this. We're seeing signs uh, going on. Uh, now, I don't know about all these different signs. Uh, the northern parts of the world, the ice is beginning to melt. You know, I don't know. I, I, I recognize that the weather is changing drastically. I'm seeing a lot of weather events that are changing in different places across the world. Weather that the different countries are having, I'm trying to make it clear, that they've never had before. We're seeing great events take place across the world. And listen to this. Science are trying to explain these different things, these different events that are going on across the world. Here's what they say. They say the signs are thickening around us. They are telling us that this soon approach of Christ is very near. Even scientists are starting to think something's different than has ever been before. Even scientists are looking back saying, these things shouldn't happen. Not here, not there, but we're seeing events globally. Flooding, fires are escalating at an alarming rate that not the insurance companies can't keep up. <laughs> Even Pastor John Lomacain said there will come a time that these events of destruction are happening so quick that the insurance companies aren't going to be able to keep up. Is anybody with me? And this is what we're looking at in today's society. Listen to this. The San Diego Press print, printed this article way back in 2017. At this very moment, now we're talking uh, seven years ago, there are 127 fires burning across America. Two million acres have already been burned to cinder across America. And get this, these are fires. They are scorching thousands of acres across nine states at the same time. Now, this is seven years ago. But listen to this right here. The year 2017 produce a record epic proportion of fire never before seen in human history. Hurricanes of catastrophic events have taken place. These are the worst, now we're talking seven years ago, the worst hurricanes that have ever been recorded that man has ever seen. Jesus is about to come. Is anybody with me? Listen to this. The paper quotes, isn't it obvious, they say, these are the signs of the end. These events are written in your Bible. <laughs> These events, this paper writes, are in your Bible. Wake up. Is anybody, is anybody with me today? This is what, listen to that. Jesus prophesied and warned of these events, and they are being filled right before our eyes, and yet it's hard even for the seventh evidence to grasp the concept that Jesus is just a breath away. That all these signs, now are these signs here, Carolyn, to scare me, to frighten me? No, they're warning signs. Have you been reading your Bible? I'm about to come and receive my church. Wake up for the time is nigh. Listen to this. Now get this, Brenda. The floods across the world, we're going to go back to 2016 now. The floods across the world and in America were the most ever recorded in history in 2016. In Louisiana, now this is what went on. I'd forgot some of the events had taken place. In Louisiana alone, there were 60 
thousand structures destroyed by flood, and it cost Louisiana ten billion dollars. Now we're talking a few years ago. I want to remind you that things have escalated at a faster rate since then. Now get this: in 2016, there were 160 natural disasters of epic proportions that the world has never seen. Across the world, 750 natural disasters happened in 2016, destroyed millions of homes, millions of acres, and thousands were killed worldwide. And we just look at it and say, boy, that's, that's bad. No, it's a warning. It's more than bad. It's a warning Jesus is about to come. Now, look, now think back. Now, sometimes we forget. It seems like we try to put these natural disasters out of our head because we don't want to think about them. But listen to this here. And now we're going to go back to 2016, 2017, 2018. Listen to this. Hurricanes. We remember Harvey and Irma. But what about Arlene hurricane? What about Brett? What about Cindy? What about Don? What about Emily? What about Franklin? What about Gert? What about Rena? What about Sean? What about Tammy? Hundreds of hurricanes have come and went, and we just sort of tossed them to the side. Literally hundreds. One catastrophic event after another. Get this one here, Brenda. Now listen to this. Tornadoes. I'm still afraid of tornadoes. <laughs> I, I, I'm still afraid of them. Gary and Rosemary will text me and say, it don't look good tonight. We got one coming. Oh, it's dark on the lake. I think, oh, my. But listen to this. In the first three months of 2017, America had tornadoes were sighted 400 in three months. The normal sighting up until then was 145. It jumped to 400. Is anybody with me? Mel and G. White said that hurricanes, tornadoes, and these events of catastrophic events would escalate rapidly right before Jesus come. Uh, in the manuscript, volume 19, page 280, here's what she said. Local disturbances in nature, they are permitted to take place as a symbol of that which may be experienced all over the world as the four angels will cease to hold back the winds of strife. There are right now four angels around this globe that are holding back the last winds of strife. But we're starting to feel the breeze. Am I with me? We're starting to feel the breeze. If you go to Revelation 7, 1 through 3, here's what the Bible says. Not what Pastor Donnie said. This is what the Bible says. And after these things, I saw four angels. Now, this is John, the revelator, standing on the four corners of the earth. And they were holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor the sea or any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels who were holding back the winds of strife, to whom it was given, don't hurt the earth and the sea yet. Come on. They're holding back, saying, hurt not the earth. Neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of God in their forehead. At this point, God in his mercy and his grace is holding back that last terrible storm that is coming to the earth. And I'm telling you, it's a coming. It's a coming, folks. So it said, don't hurt the trees. What is saying, don't hurt my servants. Hold back. Protect them. Keep them safe because I got more babies that are going to be born into the kingdom. And until I say, stand back. And here's what Mrs. White said. Eventually, the angel will tell the four angels to stand back and then let the devil come in and do his havoc. The only reason the devil hasn't just destroyed this earth already is because of God's mercy. He's holding back the last four winds of strife. What does it mean, four winds? He's coming from every direction north, south, east, west, when it all breaks loose, as the man says, all hell will break loose upon this planet and the devil will have his way. Whew. Lord, have mercy. 
Now listen to this, this author says. The four angels, I love this, represent divine agencies in the world that are holding back the forces of evil until the work of God on human hearts is completed and the people of God. Those who are seeking God and will accept Him before the great and terrible day of reckoning falls upon the earth, when all have accepted Him, all that have accepted Him as their Lord and Savior, all of the plagues of hell will fall. You know why? They step back. When God says step back, they step back. And all of the devil and his demons will come and flood the earth with violence and chaos and death and destruction as we have never seen before. And it's a coming. It's coming. Is anybody with me? Now listen to this. The four corners signify the whole earth is threatened. Thus we see the signs the natural disasters, the wars, the threats of wars, and the decline of moral values and behavior. Now listen to this. Here's what the SDA commentary says, Dan. Viewed in the light of the great controversy between Christ and Satan, these destructive forces represent the efforts of Satan to spread ruin and destruction everywhere. Everywhere. But again, because of God's amazing grace, those angels are still holding back the demonic forces that are surrounding this earth. They're holding them back. But what's going to happen when God says, stand down? Step back. We think we've seen a lot of damage and destruction and violence and hate and bitterness in this world. Wait till the angels step back and Satan and his demons and his angels and his hate and his business takes over the whole wide world. Is anybody with me? But even in the midst of the, all this destruction, God will have a people. <laughs> when all looks hopeless, God will have a people. Now, the spirit of prophecy states this. When the work of seeding is complete, what are you talking about? When everyone that is going to accept Christ, when everyone has decided and there's no one left to accept Christ, this is what's going to happen. When the work of seeding is completed, then God will say to the four angels, no longer combat Satan and his efforts to destroy. Let him work out his malignity upon the children of disobedience, for the cup of their iniquity is full. Testimony 6, page 408. Hear what I just said. When God says, stand down, step back, lest the last person... I have written in the book of life. Now, let Satan come in. Whew. Lord. So you know what that tells me? It tells me even though we're living in a chaotic world, there's still some babies to be received. <laughs> there's still some folks out there that need to hear about Jesus and his grace and his mercy. But she said, when the work of seeding every saint is finished, he says, let the devil do his work. Step back. Is anybody with me? Let's go to 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verses 1 through 4. Now, again, this, is, this isn't a message sending terror across America. This is a message of warning. God said, I'm sending you these warnings so you know that I'm about to come for my people. Listen to this, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And I'm looking at them. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. They shall be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. And get this one here, women and men, without natural affection. It's everywhere. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, which means out of control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures 
more than lovers of God. And get this one here, and I see this everywhere, Doug. Lazy, slothful, wife beaters, child molesters. I'm telling you this, and I, this younger generation don't get mad at me. I have never seen so many lazy teenagers in all my life. I have never seen more lazy than 20 year olds, 30 year olds, and 40 year olds. I've never seen anything quite like it. That's why I admire that man behind that broadcasting booth, CJ, a worker. His brother is a worker, not only in the secular world to make a living, but for Jesus. We've got a young lady right behind that camera that loves Jesus, and she's a worker for Jesus. We don't see that that often anymore. So many people walking up down the streets of Benton and West Frankfurt and Heron and Carbondale and Marion, young men with backpacks on their back that won't lift a finger to feed themselves, that constantly hold these boxes, I need food. I say get a job. Well, here's what I'm talking about. And that's what we're seeing today. She said they will be slothful. Lazy, disobedient to parents. They will become wife beaters and child molesters. And listen to this. I got to entitle this here, Baba Joe. It's called the sting of sin. Sin's got a sting to it. It hurts. Yeah, listen to this right here. In America. Now, I'm talking about the country that God raised in 1776 to take the gospel across the world. This is what's going on in the country that God personally raised. Listen to this. In America, in 2015, there were 670,000 children in foster care because the parents had discarded them. Due to deadbeat dads and moms, due to divorce, over 150,000 were left on street corners. Lord have mercy. Get this. Every year in America, the country that God raised, there are 960,000 reports of domestic violence in the home. Alcohol, drugs, poverty, and I'm going to say it again, deadbeat dads. Deadbeat. Lord have mercy. Listen to this right here. Every two minutes... <laughs> I'm talking about America, Jan. I'm not talking about across the world. Every two minutes, get this, a person is sexually assaulted. Before this message is over, there'll be 30 women that are sexually assaulted in America. One out of five women have either been assaulted or they have been attempted to be assaulted. One out of five, 20% of all women across America have been assaulted at one time or another. Now, something's wrong. Something's wrong with that picture. Listen to this one. Across the world, there are one billion women who have been raped or beaten in their lifetime. We've only got eight billion people. A billion women have been assaulted, raped, or beaten in their lifetime. You tell me the morals haven't gone downhill? Come on, somebody. Listen to this. Homeless men and women in just New York City. There are 4,000 people in just New York City that are walking around. They're homeless. They sleep on the streets. They sleep in parks. They sleep in dark alleys. They sleep in cardboard boxes. They sleep in front of the Empire State Building, in front of Macy's, in front of Madison Square Garden. Lord have mercy. There are 80 camps in New York City, camps that are full of hungry, tired, forgotten people with no hope. Their dreams have perished. They are outcasts, and they are drug addicts, and no one cares. Whew. Something wrong with us. We've all said it. Well, they brought it on themselves. <laughs> we bring a lot of things on ourselves, but God in his mercy <laughs> brings it out. Come on. Now, it says here that when the four angels, now remember, let's go back just a second here. Right now on this planet, north, south, east, and west, God has angels standing there to keep Satan and his demons from, from taking full control 
of this earth. When the four angels <laughs> finally let go and cease holding in check the malicious designs of Satan, the fierce winds of human compassion, all the elements of strife will be let loose. And the whole world will be involved in ruin more terrible than that that came upon Jerusalem in 70 A.D. In 70 A.D., Jerusalem was completely wiped out and destroyed. It's going to be worse than that. You know, and what's amazing, you know, I had this sermon all put together. And last night, at Brenda, we usually on Friday nights watch three or four sermons. Mark Finney did one on the very last days and the crises. We're on the same page. If you're on the same page with Mark Finley, that's good, right? Yeah. That's what he said. Science says, I love this, uh, you know, God calls them foolish. Science says that the climate change, the cause of fires and floods and hurricanes, which cause disasters at land and sea, is just part of nature itself. We might as well expect these things. There's no God in control. These things are going to just happen. But the Bible says that God's in control of everything. Is anybody with me? Amen. Science will not give credit that there's a God out there that created all things that's watching this world with intense vigor. They won't give him the true knowledge that he is God. They won't do it. Listen to this. In 2016, let's go back to nature. In 2016, there were more fires than had ever been recorded in human history. Alaska, in 2016, they had 5 million acres of land burned due to fires. Fires in Canada, in California, in Oregon, and Washington have burned hundreds and hundreds of thousands of forests. Come on, somebody, wake up. Jesus is coming. Floods! The Bible talks about floods. Florida, back in 2016, 15, 17, five counties had to declare a state of emergency. The president declared a state of emergency in Louisiana and Texas, and Kentucky. Oklahoma had state of emergencies of floods. Floods in Pakistan and across the world, the scientists say, are at an all-time high. We've never seen anything quite like it. Listen to this right here. Our morals. There are... Now, you got to get this. There are more prostitutes now than has ever been put together throughout history. Now, right now. Now, a lot, I'm not pointing fingers. A lot of them are starving. They're desperate. The husbands have left. They're trying to feed their families. Is anybody with me? They don't love that life. They hate it. They despise prostitution. But they think, I got to eat. My babies have to eat. Is anybody with me today? Listen to this. There are now, now, living on the streets is so widely accepted among this younger generation. Get this. Right now, there are websites teaching you how to live on the streets. <laughs> how do you do it? How do you live on them? And get this. This has always bothered me. And Brenda talked about this over and over. Every day. Now, think about this. Every day, 23,000 children starve to death. Every day, 23,000. Of course, we're talking Ethiopia, different parts of Africa. 23,000 are starved to death every day. If, if my grandchildren, every night we go to bed, before we go, they eat supper at 5 and then again at 7. And then they snack till they fall asleep. And I'm still worried they might be hungry. Is anybody with me? 23,000 starved to death every day. <laughs> Get this right here. In America, every 14 seconds, a burglary occurs. Every 14 seconds. In America, because of these, these burglaries, 
It's cost us four and a half billion dollars a year, and the taxpayer pay it. Us. Because of the burglars that take case every 14 seconds. In America, and I'm one of them, I now have an alarm system. I got one. I admit it. Listen to this. I th after our church got robbed of all of our equipment, I said, we got me an alarm system. But listen to this. One in five homes in America have alarm systems. And yet two and a half million homes are burglarized every year. <laughs> Doug, you're going to love this one. Every day in America, 2,500 cars are stolen. Every two minutes, a car is stolen. And the Bible says don't steal. <laughs> Every two minutes, someone, their car is stolen in America. Drugs. Listen to this one. There are 22 million drug addicts in America today. In the last 16 years that we know of, 100 and 83,000 people have died because of overdoses. You think our morals haven't declined? Is anybody with me? Genesis 6, 5, 7, and 8, CJ. Those that are watching in, I'm just sort of getting warmed up here. We're in a crisis situation. Jesus is about to come for his people. In Genesis 6, 5, 7, I hear what the Bible says. Thank you, Brother Moses. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination and thought of his heart was on evil continually. Does that ring a bell? Verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy, destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. It was coming when sin gets so bad and it affects everyone, it's got to be washed clean. But here's what happened in God and His mercy. In verse 8, it says, But Noah, out of all the people on the planet, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Remember what I said a while ago? God will always have a people. In the Noah's time, there was only eight. <laughs> wow. No matter how perverse the world may become, God will always have a people, right? And again, it was said a crisis had came to the top of the world. A crisis means a turning point situation that leads to an important change. Crisis means it comes to the point something has to be changed. God sees our world today. Men are perverse. Every imagination is upon money and power and sex and pornography and drugs. Is anybody with me? So something has to take place. Something has to take place. It's a situation. Listen to this. The earth in Noah's time was filled with unrighteousness, lust, greed, and violence. Man lived in total rejection of God and his laws. And God finally said, the time has come. A change has to be made. When man rejects God and pulls away, here's what Ellen G. White says happened every time, Bobby Joe. Here's what she said happens. When we reject God and his commandments, here's what she said. When man rejects God, God always pulls away, for he never forces himself on anyone. When God pulls back, she said, the enemy comes in, Satan, with all of his chaos and destruction. And that's what happened. Crisis in point. In Noah's day, now this is what was going on in Noah's day. Murder and violence ran rapid, leading to self-annihilation. A change had to be made. But God had a plan. Now listen. And God's plan was filled with mercy and grace. Remember, no matter the crisis situation, 
God has eyes that are focused on his people. Man's eternal destiny was in the balance. In Noah's day, Charlie, in Noah's day, Susan, man's destination, his total destination, his eternal destination was in the balance. We're there now. Our destination, our eternal destiny at this point in our world today, we're in a crisis situation. Is anybody agree with that? Man's eternal destination was in the balance. Satan, his de de demons, they ruled the world in Noah's day. They had stolen the hearts and minds of God's people, and the destruction of mankind was set in motion. But again, God has a people. God's grace surrounded Noah and his family. This family was God's church. No matter the crises, no matter the death of the destruction, God's church will be delivered. Hear what I just said. I know it's a little scary when you get on the Internet, when you see the political violence in America. Is anybody with me? When you watch that, it's a little bit scary. But she said, remember this, God's people will be delivered. An example of deliverance, Revelation 12, 6, and the woman, the church, fled into the wilderness and where God had prepared a place for her that God, listen to this, in the Dark Ages, and when I was in school, it was called the Dark Ages. 1,260 years. But really what the Dark Ages was for 1,260 years, the Catholic Church was killing Christians by the thousands. Now, let's admit it. The Catholic Church was killing Christians by the thousands because they would not bow down to the Pope. So God, seeing this going on, had a place for his people, and the church went into the wilderness to hide, to regroup. Am I with me? They would not down, bow down before the Pope. And Christians were killed for 1,260 years. No wonder it was called the Dark Ages. Is anybody with me? In this period, this author says, known as the Dark Ages, lasting 1,260 years, God's church suffered persecution beyond imagination. Hundreds of thousands of God's people were executed year after year after year, year after year after year, and still God's people would not bow down before the Pope. I love that. Now listen to this. Remember, a crisis is a turning point in an unstable condition. Our world's unstable, by the way. The moral condition of man in Noah's day had fallen to an all-time low, and a change had to be made. The Bible makes it very clear that there will be one crisis after another until Jesus returns. In Matthew 24, 6, 7, and 8, here's what the Bible says. Listen to this. It says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes, but these are just the beginning of sorrows. There are warning signs of Christ's soon return so that God's people will not be taken by surprise. Is anybody with me? To be taken by surprise. I'm going to read this to you, and I think I did this about eight, nine years ago. But I want, listen to the story. Whew. The date was September the 8th, 1900. Now, it was a beautiful day in the city of Galveston, Texas. A population at that time of about 38,000 people. Now, Galveston is located in the southern part of Texas, and Galveston is a port city. They receive goods from all over the world, this port city does. In the 1800s and early 1900s, goods were brought by boat from all parts of the world, and Galveston was rich. They had it all. Man, they had, a, they had it all. The, the morning of September the 8th, 1900 began just like every other beautiful morning. The sun was shining. The children were playing on the beach, completely unaware that destruction was hours away and 6,000 people would be washed away in just a few hours. It would be the deadliest storm that had ever hit America. The people were taken by total surprise. No satellites, no TV, no warning system. 
today with our satellite and our internet, we know when the storm's coming and what time it's going to start raining. They had no idea it was coming. They were totally unprepared. But God, on the other hand, through Scripture, has warned of his soon arrival. He uses crisis situation to warn of his soon coming. It talked about wars and rumors of war. What about the Great Depression of 1929? What about World War I? What about World War II? What about the confrontation? Listen to this regarding nuclear missiles between President Kennedy and Fidel Castro in 1960. I remember that. These are situations, crisis situations. The, and here's why, Brenda, we have Jerry and Jeannie. This is why we have crisis situations. It allows God to get the attention of the whole world. I told you it was coming. Get ready. Get this. And I remember this event like it was yesterday in 2004. An earthquake centered in the Indian Ocean sent waves over 3,000 miles, killing thousands of people. Remember that? Get this. Now, you talk about shaking you up, Jan, Bill, in an Italian who studied that earthquake. He said it shook the whole world. It altered the axis of the earth's rotation. This quake was 23,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. 23,000 times times more powerful than an atomic bomb, and it shook the rotation of the earth. Tell me he's not coming? Come on, somebody. The, the, the director of UNICEF said the power of the earthquake and its huge geographical reach is just staggering. It covered two continents. We are seeing at that time, 2004, the largest Relief effort that the world has ever seen. He's coming. We're in a crisis situation. Things are much worse than they were in 2004. Is anybody with me now? Donnie, why does God allow such horrendous crisis situation? Is anybody with me? A few years ago, 60,000 people in China were killed by an earthquake. 23,000 children starved to death every day. Did you know that AIDS is not just a disease? It is an epidemic that is spreading across the world at an incredible rate, and medical science really doesn't have an answer. Did you know that AIDS is still going, by the way? It's still moving? Economists today, listen to this. Our faith in the stock market and the banking system is gone. America's foundation, which is built upon our economy, has crumbled. This financial crisis has not only paralyzed America, it's paralyzed the whole world. <laughs> this is going on right now. But listen to Matthew 7, 24, 25, 26, 27. Listen to Jesus. Therefore... Whosoever hear the sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken them unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they beat upon the house, and it fell not, because its foundations was built upon the rock, Jesus Christ. Amen. So no matter how deep these crises may be, how disastrous, catastrophic, they may be. If our personal lives are built upon the rock, Jesus Christ, we will be delivered through all of these. Is anybody with me today? Listen to this. I might as well go on. Multi-millions across the world have invested their lives in the stock market. They live it. They breathe it. They're dedicated to it. They had great faith in our banking system. They thought, we've got money. It will never end, and yet the stock market in 2008, it fell. And they lost millions and millions and trillions 
of dollars. Is anybody with me today? And again, let's read, let's read 2 Timothy again. Men shall be lovers of themselves. They shall be bolsters. They shall be pride. They shall be high-minded. They be, shall be seekers of power, full of lust, and money-hungry. Is anybody with me? Now, this is written by my favorite writer. October the 9th, Carolyn, 1901. The nations are in unrest. Time of perplexity are upon us. Men's hearts are failing them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. And get this, a world economist, here's what he said. You can see fear on every face. The stock market is up. The stock market is down. Levels that we've never seen before. We are perplexed. What do we buy? What do we sell? Fear has taken control. Now, this is our stock markets. <laughs> They're in a state of fear. They're perplexed. They don't know what to do. And then God says to his people, the redeemed, the remnant church, the church that he will de deliver, he said this, fear not. And he says that 366 times in the Bible. Fear not. One for every day and one extra. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Again, the spirit of prophecy says God has a purpose in allowing these calamities. They are his means of calling men and women to their senses. <laughs> That's what she said. And she said, how frequently do we hear of earthquakes, tornadoes, and destruction by fire? Destruction by flood, the loss of property, and the loss of life. These are among the agency by which he seeks to arouse men and women. You are in danger. You are in danger. The last, here's what she said. As we close here, CJ, listen to what she said. The last great crisis is at hand. Now, this is 150 years ago. We are standing at the threshold of the crises of the ages. In quick, now, my Seventh-day Adventist friends out there, listen to this. In quick succession, the judgments of God will follow with fires, floods, earthquakes, war, bloodshed, he allowed these to happen to get your attention. Listen to Romans 14, 11, and 12 as we close, Doug. Listen to this. And that knowing the time, that now is high time. You know what that means in the Bible? In the Greek, it means high time means the time of greatest importance. Paul said, when you see these things come, it's the time of greatest importance. He said, wake up out of your sleep. He's talking to the church, Gary. <laughs> to the church. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day of God is at hand. But we... As God's children, Charlie, think about this. We should have no fear. Just as God provided Noah safety and his family in the flood, he will save his people. He has always had a people. And in every crisis, God has had a people. And this author says, God promises us we will be delivered. Awesome. Awesome. Brother Doug, would you have prayer for us, please? We thank you for this message. Father, it is a message of warning. Father, we just pray that you would prepare us for these times ahead. Father, we take solace in the fact that there is hope in you. That, Father, you, do, you will have a people even in these hard and rough, scary and momentous times. 
But Father, we can take that hope and that solace in, in believing that one day this, all these things will come to pass. But we know, Father, with all of our hearts, that one day you will put an end to this and we will be with you someday. Father, we pray for those who are gathered here. We pray for those who have heard this and will see this sermon later. Father, will you draw near them? Will you open their hearts and their minds to these beautiful truths that, Father, that they will take this warning to heart also and to look to you for their salvation. Father, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, once again, and your love that you give us each and every day. And Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.